I didn't want to cry, Kim. Yeah. We stand this morning for the reading of God's word. Matthew six thirty three. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. All of what things? Fill in the blank. Harsh desires. Your friends, your family, your loved ones will be complete in him. We seek first the kingdom of God. While we're standing, I want to take a moment of silence. We all have loved ones that have fought in the wars, shed blood, and died for our freedom. I don't take that lightly. Pastor Todd told me to be bold this morning. We need to rise up. Countries belling us. You know, when we roll out the red carpet for people to stand on, to walk on things good happen in their life I saw a vision of the blood of our soldiers on the border being trampled over that breaks my heart my grandpa great grandpa fought in the war yours did too so we could have freedom they paid a price for you and I to have freedom. I feel like today that freedom is being trampled over. We as a church need to rise up, be strong, stand in one accord. Just take a moment. May be seated. Well, good morning. Welcome to Life of Love Ministries. It's so good to have you guys here this morning. I want to talk to us this morning about being in one accord. You know, today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday was all about being in one accord. The reason the things happened on that day is because everyone was in one accord. They believed in the same thing. They believed in the same Jesus. The price that he paid. And the Holy Spirit came, just as he said, and descended on every one of them. He wants to do the same with you. He's going to give us power when he does that. You don't realize how much power you're going to have when the Holy Spirit ascends upon you. You're going to have power beyond measure. 
And I don't know if all of you know about Memorial Day, all the ins and outs of Memorial Day, how it was founded and, and all those things, but I just want to give you a little bit of um, education on Memorial Day. The reason that it's on in May, the last Monday of May, is believed because um, there's flowers that bloom all over the country in May. You guys know that. How many of you have flowers that are blooming, bloomed, ready to bloom, cut? Shelly's already cut some, brought them here. So that's why they picked May is because the flowers would all be in bloom and everyone could participate in that, taking flowers to the grave sites of the ones who had lost their lives in the wars. And there were some women that gathered together in Missouri And as they were standing beside the graveside of the Confederate soldiers who had lost their lives, they were laying flowers down at their graves. And they noticed the graves of the soldiers that were over here of the, of the other party of the Union soldiers, and how that no one had come and laid flowers on their graves. And those women in one accord separated the flowers and they took flowers and laid it on those graves too. What an image of unity. You know, when we go to war, when we go and we fight for our country, we're fighting for the freedoms of our country. And when other countries are fighting against us, they're just doing what they're told to do. They're doing what they're told to do. We're all people, though, created by God in His image. I want you to look at all people that way. We're all created in the image of God. There's not one greater than another. He don't honor and respect one more than another. We're all created in His image. And these women recognize that all mankind, all mankind was precious. What a testimony that they would take flowers and lay it on both graves of the ones who had killed their husbands and the ones whose husbands had been killed. Two things that stand out to me. How the flowers are even in one accord. They all came up in the same season to be laid on the grave. And how those women were in one accord that day to put flowers on the graves of both. Would you be able to do that? Is your heart positioned in the way that you would be able to do that? That you would be able to take the flowers that you have for your husband or wife or son or daughter and lay it on their enemy's grave as well. That will tell you how your heart is positioned toward Father. How many of you remember the Amish family? The Amish school, that there was a shooting at the Amish school. Does anybody remember that? There's a young man named Charlie barricaded himself in the school. He killed five of the Amish children, wounded five more. That's horrible. That's terrible. But as you know, Charlie committed suicide after he did that. The key factor in this is that the, the Amish community, the father of the, of the Amish children, said that he was going to forgive that man. And he didn't think that if he forgave that man that the rest of the community would follow suit and Unite with them. But they did. They went to the gravesite thinking they were going to be there alone and because of the way the Amish communities work. And they kept coming one after another, after another, after another. Supporting their decision to forgive. 
And they said that in that forgiveness, they have a tremendous relationship with the family of Charlie. That's what love does. That's what unity does. That's what being united with one another does. I don't want this day to be all like sad and gloomy and doomy. For this not, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing that my father, my grandfather, and them fought. My brothers and sisters, sons and daughters fought in a war. I want to rejoice with them. But I also feel like the Lord wants us to know that we must be in one accord with one another. In order to see the transformation that we need to see in this city. If we don't come together and be in one accord, we're not going to see that. If we don't expect the things from God, the great things from God, we're not going to see that. When we're in one accord, things happen. People pay attention. People start listening. And when they see a church, a body of people in one accord, they're going to start paying attention. They're going to start listening to what God is wanting to do in this city. I'm telling you, he wants to turn this city upside down. I believe that he's going to. We're already seeing some results, not just from Life of Love, but from other churches that are catching on, catching what God's trying to do in this community. If you have your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 6 through 8. It said the crowds with one accord were given attention to what was said by Philip. And they heard, listen, they heard with one accord. And in their hearing, they saw the signs which he was performing. Remember, this is after, this is, this is chapter 8, this is after Pentecost, this is after they received power from upon high. You have an after as well. When you receive that power, there's an after that. You're going to see lives change, you're going to see hearts won, you're going to see people come to Christ, you're going to see people be healed of all sorts of things. And it says, for in this case, a many who had unclean spirits, they were coming out of them, shouting with a loud voice. And many had been paralyzed, and had been lame, and were healed. All this started with a few men being in one accord, believing in Jesus, and the power of heaven fell upon them. And gave them that authority to go out and heal in the land. And you guys have the same authority. The same power. The same Jesus. To do those things. We get so focused on our own lives and things that are going on in our lives. We don't, we don't have time for others. You see someone in the, in the store at a gas station that needs a touch from heaven. We have to start making the time. Utilizing our power and our authority to touch the lives of the ones around us. Can you imagine? You guys all go to Walmart, don't you? I'm sure everybody goes to Walmart. Can you imagine all of us going to Walmart and, and praying and people start getting healed? Can you imagine the talk that's going to start going around the town? Go to Walmart and get healed. You don't have to go to Life of Love. Go to Walmart and get healed because the people at Life of Love know who they are, whose they are. Know they have the power and authority to heal because Jesus that lives in them. Imagine the, how that will change this city. I pray for people all the time and I can't, I can't tell you how I do it other than I just do it. I know who I am, whose I am. I know the authority that I carry when someone's not healed, I press in for more and ask God to show me more. 
and bring more. You notice it says in here. And many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. It didn't say all of them. It said many. They were working on it. They were working on growing in Christ, knowing who they are. Power that they had. They were growing. You'll see as they went through. If you guys just really get in the word and start reading the word. There's so much meat to (coughs) just this one book. And Acts, there's so much meat to it if you'll get in and, and just study it. Starting with chapter 1, just study it. Actually go at the end of John and read that and it just carries on into Acts. And many times we'll see in the Word of God the effects of being in one accord. Have you ever marched around something and it, and it fell down? You know they did that in the Bible. How many, of you, how many of you know the story of Jericho? The walls of Jericho? Some of you don't. How many of you don't know that story? Don't be scared if you raise your hand. I didn't know it at one time. They marched around the walls of Jericho in one accord. And after the seventh lap around the wall, they shouted and blew all their instruments and made a great noise unto the Lord. And the walls came tumbling down. I love that story. That shows what it's like to be in one accord. I don't know why they had to travel around the wall seven times. I don't know if that was to get them in the routine of what they were doing. Sometimes we got to go through some things over and over and over and over and finally catch on. You know, like sometimes like in this in this church when we're having prayer at ten o'clock, we're new, new in this building, new in this facility, and sometimes we have to just, it's gonna take some time, but we'll get used to it. We'll stop the talking. Start praying. Continue in prayer. People are gonna watch and see, and they're gonna follow suit with what we're doing. But they marched around that city and the walls came tumbling down. And I believe the Lord wants to work in your life that way. If you will come in one accord with Him, living for Him, serving Him in one accord, He's going to crumble the walls in your life, the things in your life that are so high that you can't get over. The things in your life that you're going through that you you can't fathom, you can't understand, you can't bring reason with. He's going to crumble all those things if you will serve Him, if you will live for Him, if you will love Him. You will come in one accord with him. How many of you will agree our country is not in one accord right now? Yeah. What about our families not being in one accord? Yeah. What about our churches not being in one accord? What can we do to fix this? I mean, what can we do to fix this situation? We're the church. We're, we're, we're supposed to be the greatest number of people on the planet of the earth, the church, the body of Christ. So it's our job to watch these things change, to see these things change, to see people's lives change. And in Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things will be added into you. First we must seek him. Not ourself. Not our own desires. Not our own things. Not our own wants. God will give you your desires and wants. But you seek him first. The kingdom of God. And all these things will be added into you. We talked in Second Chronicles 7.14. My people will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. And I will change their land. I will heal their land. We must lift one another up in prayer. The 
despite our differences, lift one another up in prayer. Don't just pray for the ones that, that, that are good to you, the ones that give you money or the ones that are nice. Pray for the ones that hurt you, that stab you, that wouldn't stomp on you if he was on fire to put you out. Pray for those. And God will bless them. God will encourage them. God will give them financial blessing. God will give them strength. God will bring healing to their lives, to their families. In James 5.16, it says this. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. So if you want to be healed, it says, therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. We must be honest with ourselves. And with each other. Listen, guys, we must speak the truth about when we got some woundedness going on in our lives and our hearts. We must speak the truth about that. Don't just cover it up. So many people cover it up, say, I'm okay, I'm all right, I don't have nothing wrong with me, I'm good. That's not true. A lot of us have woundedness that we don't even know about. If you're not living in overflow and and, and drinking from your overflow, you've got some wounds in your heart, in your life, that you need healed. I remember the time when I was not drinking out of my overflow, when I was in woundedness, woundedness, and woundedness. I mean, think of it. Four dads by the time I was 16, been beaten black and blue. I've been hooked on drugs. I've dealt drugs. I've hated people. And what have you been through? Those things don't happen overnight. You know, it didn't happen overnight for me. It took me almost 46 years to figure out I had some things in my life that needed fixed. I thought I was okay up until then. And God started showing me little by little there's things in my heart that need healed. There's places in my heart where I've been, I've been hurt. People have hurt me. Life has hurt me. I've hurt me. And I had to have that healing. And you have to have that healing to be able to come in one accord with each other. You must be honest with yourself. Speak the truth about what's going on in your life. I'm going to give you an opportunity here in a moment. Stop trying to get things done with broken nets. How many of you know when you go fishing you can't pull the fish up? you got a broken net. It don't work. They'll go right through it. Randy, you go fishing. Can you catch, if your net's broke, can you? You try to, they'll just go right through it. Remember we talked about, last week we talked about Peter on the boat. They were fishing and Jesus was there on the shore. And, and uh, this was before he ascended into heaven. He was on the shore. And Jesus is already there making breakfast. He's already had fish and, and, and bread, you know, and he must have got up a little earlier than they, or they actually, they'd been out all night long and uh, fishing, didn't catch one thing. And here Jesus said, hey, throw it on the other side. They did. They had a full net. Full net, full of fish. 153 fish, I believe it was. But when he brought the net in, They pulled it out, and the net wasn't broken, and they got all of them. They brought them all in. And you know, 
a lot of times that we try to go and minister to other people in the midst of our woundedness. And I've found that if, if you are a fearful person, it's going to be hard for you to help someone who is a fearful person to overcome that fear. By the blood of Jesus, you might be able to get it done, but more likely, you're both going to stay in fear. You're both going to stay wounded. Now, I don't want to say wounded people create more wounded people, but sometimes wounded people ministering to wounded people remain wounded people. There has to be some victory in there somewhere. There has to be some overcoming in there somewhere. And when I go to heaven, I want to be able to bring something to the table with me. I want to have my nets fixed. Every wound healed. No holes. Because I don't want to miss one. I want to bring them all in. And when I come to the supper table, I want to have something to offer. And I want you to have something to offer. So what we're going to do this morning. We're going to find a partner. Not, not family. Someone you don't know. Not someone you come with, someone you don't know. And we're going to confess our sins to one another. And we're going to be healed. And we're going to stand in one accord. This might be challenging for you, but it's necessary. It's the word of God. You guys good? Listen, listen. There's nothing to be afraid of. God's in this right now. He's going to touch you. He's, he's going to touch you. This is the word of God. Confess your sins one to another and you'll be healed. If you got something in your life you're dealing with, something you're needing, some, something you need help with, something you're struggling with, something you don't understand about the Word of God, confess that to your brother. See what happens. Let them help you. I love doing this. I'm an open book. You guys can know anything. You can ask me anything about my life, and I'll tell you. Anything. It doesn't matter. I don't hide anything. Not one thing hidden in my life. I don't understand a lot of things. I don't understand a lot of people. I don't understand people's actions sometimes. Randy asked me last week. I was telling him about some stuff that was going on in my life. Just confiding in him. And... He said, maybe you still have some abandonment issues in your life. You know, and Randy, I've been pressing into the Lord and asking him. Because I was confessing to Randy, you know, all the stuff that I've been through. And I'm like, you know, I don't understand this stuff, you know, and what, what people are doing and, and how it's affecting me. And, and um, I was hurting. I was hurting. I was hurting. And so I've been praying about it, Randy, and I'm just, I'm seeking the Lord on it. I, I feel like I've forgiven everybody. I feel like I've, you know, my four dads, I've forgiven people that have left me in my life. You know, abandonment spirit is so easy to grab a hold of because so many people lose somebody and that makes them feel abandoned, makes them feel wounded in that area. Someone just abruptly leaves their life or someone dies or someone who walks out of their life, you know, that, that leaves that abandonment there. And you can, you know, don't just have to be from a father leaving or a mother leaving. It can be from a, a death or something like that, just that abandonment. -ness. And believe me, if it's, if it's not of heaven, I don't want it in me. If it's not something that, that God has for me, I don't want it. And abandonment is one of those things that can really hurt a 
person and keep a person down. Keep them out of being in one accord with other people because they, they put up walls from that woundedness. And I, and I don't want to put up any wall toward anybody. So if you would for me this morning. Find a partner. Husband and wife, you can find a husband and wife. Partner up like that if you want. Um, don't let this be something that's horrible. This is going to be cool. I, I, prom, I, I, I promise you, you're going you're gonna to see some healing today. Woundedness is going to be healed in your life today from this. This is the day, mark this day, that we are healed and we come in one accord with what God's doing. Water immersion is tonight. Come, seal it. I've got to do a wedding here in a couple hours. And uh, they're going to come back tonight and get in the water and seal their wedding, seal their vows. I encourage you to come back tonight. Anything that you find out today, anything that What's going on in your life that, that might need further healing, further touch? Come back and, and let God just seal that deal and, and uh, heal all of your wounds completely. I'm going to stand. We're going to pray first, and then I'll, uh, I'll let you guys get at it. Don't leave. Please don't leave. It ain't going to take that long. It's only 19 after. Father, we love you today. We glorify you. We magnify your name. Jesus, we lift you up. Praise you, Lord. You're so good to us. Father, we ask this morning that our wounds would be healed. Our souls would be healed. Our mind, will, emotions would be healed. Our thoughts would be healed. Thought patterns. Salvation happens today. Unity happens today. Healing happens today. In Jesus' name, amen. Find somebody to partner with. Please don't leave. Please. It's going to be good.